Todd from Sideshow FX, and in this video I'm going to show you in detail all of the features and functions of our new pack, the Photoshop Pro Profiles for the Stream Deck Plus device. I'll demonstrate our use of the Dial Stacks feature, where we've stacked up different commands inside of the dials and how to access them. You'll see how you can work quicker with the mapping of our brush tool commands inside of the rotary dials. You'll be able to work with type more organically. Plus, you can move between all the different effect parameters easily and quickly adjusting the parameters to get to your desired result. So let's get started. Let's start off with the photography profile. You can see from the Stream Deck software, it's demonstrating that we have eight pages that are built into this profile. Now on each one of these pages, the two rows of four buttons will change. We can access those pages just by swiping through all of them. And this gives us all the different commands available in this profile. Now let's open Photoshop. Start off with this image I took in Italy. Now the dial strip itself will demonstrate what the dial will do when rotated. But in addition, the dial strip also acts in the same way as, as these buttons do. When pressed, they will invoke an action in the software. As an example, if I press on the brush icon, Photoshop loads my brush tool. The icon next to it also loads the brush tool. This icon will, of course, load an eraser. And this icon will set the blend mode to normal. Now, if we go back to the brush, let's just do a, a quick uh, demonstration here. You can see I have a brush uh, over top here. Rotating this dial will increase and decrease the size of my brush. So if I do this, and then now the second dial does the same thing, but there's a reason why these are separated. Is we're taking advantage of Stream Deck's dial stack feature, and that is if I press on the dial, it will change the function of the rotary dial and change the function of pressing the dial strip. So I press it once, you can see our icon changes to a previous and next brush. By rotating the dial, we're going back and forth between the two brushes. And this one can stay as our brush size. Clicking this once again, we'll cycle through the different kinds of brushes we have in the Brush Tool palette. And pressing once more takes us back to the first brush. Now you'll know that there is a dial stack and therefore more tools available by pressing the dial, in most cases, by this little dial stack icon that's located there. So if I press on the second dial, it changes to the hardness function. So by rotating this, we'll change the hardness of my brush, pressing once again. This changes the flow if you're using a tablet and taking advantage of flow. Clicking once more, this will change the angle. So let's just flatten this out and then rotate. And you can see we're able to affect the angle of our brush. Pressing once more takes us back to our brush size. Pressing in the eraser cycles through the eraser tool. So let's do a little more exploring. So let's go over to page two. We have the pen icon. So pressing the button loads the pen tool, pressing the dial, and then rotating will adjust which pen tool we're using. Get back to main tool, the healing brush. If we click on the healing brush and then rotate, we're adjusting the size of the healing brush. Let's just close this down. Clicking once cycles through the different healing brush tools that are under the healing menu. Press for magic wand. And we can cycle through the different magic wand tools and by pressing this, does the same feature. 
these are just a little helpful to see when you rotate what tools are underneath here. And then the lasso tool. Clicking on lasso and then cycle through the different lasso tools. Swipe again. We have eyedropper. And we can cycle through the eyedropper tools. Clicking shows the different tools. Clicking on crop, we'll cycle through the crop and slice. And same thing here. Dodge, we can change the brush size, dodge burn and sponge tools. Clicking will cycle through dodge, burn and sponge. And then the rotate tool. Unfortunately, the rotate tool when rotating, this does not rotate our image. We're hopefully gonna be able to get this unlocked in a future version. But for now, clicking on the rotate tool activates the rotate tool itself, but you'll still need to click with the mouse and rotate. Swipe again. We have the gradient tool, so clicking on gradient. Rotating will cycle through the different gradient types. Pressing will cycle through the different gradient tools. Press again. We have an art history brush. Rotates, increases and decreases the brush size. Pressing again will take you from history brush to art history brush. Clone stamp, rotating increases and decreases size of the clone stamp. Pressing once, change from a clone stamp to a pattern stamp. And then the frame tool. Swipe. Now this is a good time to introduce you to our parameter control feature. Now I'll show you how this works. Let's say, and as you can see above in the upper case here, this section is for our um, layer adjustments. If I want to make a uh, layer adjustment on hue and saturation, I'm gonna click on, uh, I, I've made a quick garbage mask in this layer above here for the sky. And if I select the hue saturation, so I'm gonna make a uh, adjustment layer for hue saturation. I'm gonna click the box for uh, use previous layer as a clipping mask. Say OK. Now you can see we've got under our properties, we've got the um, settings for our hue saturation. So let's click on just one of the boxes here. I have hue uh, highlighted. Now if I rotate this slider adjustment tile, I can adjust the hue. Now if I press this once more, I have finer control over the hue. You saw if, if I go here to coarse, it's moving it in much larger increments in, in uh, units of 10. If I click on it to the fine adjustment with the uh, yellow icon, it's moving it in units of one, so it's a finer adjustment. Now the dial next to it will allow me to access the previous or next parameter function. So by rotating it once down, I can now start affecting saturation. Down once more, I can affect lightness. Now the other two dials here, they give us some layer uh, controls. So I just made a few extra layers here, just solid color, just to make it easy to see. So with these dials here, we can move our layers up and down. So you can see I'm moving, I'm moving our white layer up and down and even all the way to the bottom if I wanted. The next dial over will allow us to select which layer we want to work on. I can select this layer and then move it down, select this layer, move it up, etc. Now let's swipe over once again. We have some layer uh, styles that we can load in and with these functions we can copy the layer style and paste the layer style. More of the same slider adjustments, layer control, and we now have 
a zoom function. Slide once more to the last page of this profile and you can see with this dial, this allows us to navigate any open documents that we have. And I have some, you can see along the tabs along the top, I have different images that we're going to be working on and I can just rotate this to go through the different images. Now when I'm zoomed all the way in, I can then use my vertical and horizontal canvas move to move around the image. One more swipe takes us back to the first page of our photo profile and we can bounce back out to the main. We're going to jump into Camera Raw. So by pressing on the Camera Raw uh, profile, if we hit the Camera Raw filter, that will open up Camera Raw in Photoshop for us and we have these functions available to us. Now this is where the parameters I was just showing you, the parameter adjustment I was just showing you, has a lot more effect. So you can see we have familiar tools that are available in Camera Raw. If we swipe over one page, you'll see we have the different modules being presented to us. So if uh, we go to, say, we go to Optics, that will open up the Optics module for us. And you can see the first parameter is ready for us to make an adjustment. So all we need to do is start adjusting with our adjustment tool. And you can see we can make our adjustment right away. Once again, by clicking on it, we can do a finer adjustment. And we can navigate to, in this case, vignette. And let's go back up to basic. So now we're in basic, we can start adjusting any of these parameters and we can bounce down very quickly to any one we want to work with and make the adjustments that we need. And there is an additional page of functions here. Back to the first page, if we click a healing brush and we want to start working with the healing brush, we also have a brush function that allows us to control the size. And of course, we can zoom in as we need. So lots for you to explore with the camera raw. Let's bounce out to the main. We're going to this design. Now you'll find there are some repeated commands that we've got in here. They're really organized for the different disciplines that you might find yourself working in, such as photography or design or painting. So the design one is laid out. We try to include and organize the tools you might find in a typical design workflow. But as with all of our packs, they're really designed for you to use as a starting point and you can feel free to move items around very easily. You can copy and paste items. You can even create new ones that you might not find in the profile itself. So a lot of these tool functions in the dial strip will already be familiar to you. We have uh, the move and artboard tool. We have uh, the, the shape tool, which you hadn't seen yet. And also uh, we'll cycle through the different shapes and we have a type tool. So if I hit type tool, it launches my type tool here. Swipe once more. And over one more time, we have our type control functions here. So by rotating this, I can change the size of the type. I can change the kerning. If we go make a second line here and select a portion, I can change the letting between the two. And I can also change the selection expansion. Swipe once more. If I just select our text item itself by clicking, by rotating these controls, I can do a fine tune adjustment of their positioning. Clicking each one of these gives a course adjustment. And our familiar layer controls here as well. Our familiar layer adjustment page with our parameter controls. Same thing with our layer styles, grid, guides, rulers, and the familiar management page here. Swipe once more will take us back to our main page. We can go back out. So now when we're going to paint, once again, 
A lot of these will be familiar, but they're reorganized for a digital paint sort of workflow. So if I just get a blank canvas here, and I click on my paintbrush. Now I've got a color loaded here, but I, I don't want to use that color, and I, I want to start with a nice color palette. What we've got here, if I swing over to page four and click on swatches, this will load our swatches profile. This gives us pages and pages of swatch palettes with preloaded colors to find into, into swatch groups based on different themes. Red, green, blue, popular, vibrant, earth, and gray. Now if we're going to do, let's say popular, we pick, uh, let's say we want to use uh, this color palette. So we have these colors presented to us. Clicking on any one of the five colors here will load that color into our foreground. Let's say I like this gold. So it loads that into my color foreground, and now when I paint, I'm painting with that color. But let's say I want to retain these and load them into my uh, swatches palette. Let's click on swatches to open up the swatches panel. And then by clicking on this button here, this will build a swatch group based on these five colors. Now this does only work in RGB. If you're working in CMYK mode, uh, these will not work. So there you have your swatch palette. Now what we do is we can uh, bounce out of here and then go back to, unfortunately this takes us back to main, so we'll have to go back into where we were in paint. And now when I start painting, now you see that it will automatically load up the last color it entered into the swatch panel. But I can easily, of course, just pick the color that I want and I can start painting with it. And I can use these adjustments to increase, decrease, change the feather, change the angle, and then quickly choose from the color palette I preloaded to change my color palette. Now rotating the blend mode while we have the brush active will change the blend mode of the brush itself. If we have another tool loaded, it will change the blend mode of the layer currently selected. And of course, if you're off a completely different blend mode here, tapping it will load the normal blend mode. So that's the paint feature in the paint profile. And there's several more pages of functions that you can explore including opening up your different palettes and uh, your different color modes. Go back out to main. The manage, it just as it says, it's just for file management. So several features here, there's three different pages, a function that are related to managing your document. Adjustments gives us all of our layer adjustments. So load up this image I took in Switzerland and, and we can make uh, say hue saturation on this and you can see the dialog box opens for us. We can then immediately start adjusting our image how we like. And hitting the key gives a soft enter and enters whatever value we've, we've just included. And we can go through several different layer adjustments. There's, there's four pages of layer adjustments here, plus a bit of a management page here. Back to main. Filters does much the same thing. And we can apply any of these effects. If we want a motion blur, we can adjust that angle parameter, go down to distance, click the button. Or okay. And more pages. There's four pages in total of these filters. One more swipe, main page, and we have swatches directly accessible. It's the same one I showed you inside the previous profile. So that's it. That's the Photoshop for the Stream Deck Plus device. I hope this gives you a good idea of what's involved and where you can find things. There's lots to explore in here. And like I said before, Feel free to move things around how you like to use them. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll hope to talk to you soon.